<laughs> this guy's my hero. <laughs> That's ridiculous. He played for Mill. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> The well-known midfielder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never heard of them. West Ham are European champions. And the Intertoto Cup. It's given me so much pleasure. But you've got to be careful what you wish for. A sick little challenge. As the great Noel Gallagher said to the simpleton Trent Alexander-Arnold, useless, absolutely useless. The Moisey in, they want Moisey out. Mourinho's rubbish, Conti's rubbish. <laughs> I've seen you both in the past few <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode nine of the Sun's new football show bringing you a fan focused look at our beautiful game. I'm Will Pugh and I'm Izzy Barker and this is Sun Sports Tap It. Oh yeah! Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. We are all about the fans on the tap in and this week we're joined by another couple of football fanatics but it's fair to say these two West Ham diehards have an added sprinkling of stardust. That is right, <laughs> Isabel. One is a hugely talented actor whose illustrious career has included cult classic roles in iconic British shows The Inbetweeners and The Office while the other has been gracing our TV screens as a much-loved pundit in the 23 years since he retired as a professional footballer. It's David Shaw, aka Jay's dad from The Inbetweeners and Former West Ham Link striker Tony Cutty! Yeah. Yeah. A bit of a free roll. Cutty now. Cutty! West Ham in the lead! Oh, God. I'd give trap number two a couple of minutes. I had eggs for lunch. That was a lovely ball through to Cutty. Onto his left. It's a great goal, on it? It's managing the West Ham Legends team. What do you mean you can't do it? Gentlemen, absolute pleasure to have you with us on the tap-in, and I assure you that's not just because they finally let me have two West Ham supporters. <laughs> yes. on. How are you getting on? I've got to say, I'm sitting here starstruck by Tony. Oh, don't be like that. Don't forget, be like forget actors. This guy's my hero. Imagine how we feel. I don't know what I did in a past life to be sat with three West Ham fans yeah. as a Fulham fan. I feel like I'm going to leave as a geezer. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, before we strap ourselves in for this, and I do everything in my power to stop this becoming a sickening West Ham love-in, <laughs> I have to remind you guys at home that you can watch this week's episode on YouTube and listen as a podcast. And coming up, we will tackle the biggest stories in the week in What's the Score? We've got On or Off Target, where Dave gives one of the most important monologues of his career as he tries to get me and Will on side. The Top or Terrible Take section follows that. I have another 100 mile per hour game of pressure test where Tony tries to prove he's still got top level ball skills <laughs> and footy knowledge to match. And of course, we'll kick off the latest round of our new mystery player picture game. Who are ya? Who are ya? <laughs> Look, gents, it's been a bit of a bleak week for West Ham supporters. Before anyone says, by the way, that you're a fan first show on the tap in, why have you got two A listers on the sofa? Both of you, have you not, have got season tickets to West Ham and go home and away. You yeah. Know? Yes. You are regular cast iron hammers. And can I confirm, I pay for mine. I don't get anything. Despite <laughs> playing for the club, I pay yeah, for mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know about you, Dave. You might get a complimentary, but I pay for my one. I've seen you both in the posh sheets. <laughs> I'm case. in the posh sheets. I'm not disputing that. <laughs> I do pay for it. Full of yeah. as well. <laughs> they get all over the place. But listen, look, Tony, you and I were out in Germany yeah. this week for that Freiburg game, Europa League, last 16. I know all three of us were at that pretty grim two-all draw against Burnley you were then bottom of the table. Tony, I also noticed you cunningly managed to uh, to w work out the how do I get away of going to football on Mother's Day and you brought your lovely oh, mum along with you, didn't you? Oh. My She's 84 now, my mum, oh. and uh, she loved it. Absolutely loved it, and uh, yeah, you can see a picture before the game there, and look, all smiles there before the game. Like <laughs> after the game, he wasn't smiling yeah, so much. But that certainly wasn't no, half time. My mum's very much a, a massive West Ham fan. My dad was a massive West Ham fan. All the family, etc. So like, they brainwashed me from a very young age, and uh, it's just. You know, it's a pleasure to take my mind. Listen, briefly, gents, we'll have plenty of time to talk about our beloved Hammers later on in the show. But just just, just quickly, how are you finding it? Dave, we'll start with you first. How are you finding it being a West Ham fan at the moment? Well, it's very up and down, isn't it? I mean, after the glory of last season, I mean, I still, I'm still on a high from that cup win, I have to say. And after taunting Arsenal fans particularly, <laughs> uh, as they gave me stick on Twitter about Declan Rice, I was saying, when's the last European trophy you won? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's great fun, taunting the opposition. But the football has been very up and down. I mean, Sunday's game, the first half, I felt like going home, to be honest. And uh, But the second half, we came out, played 4-4-2, 
put some attacking players on the pitch and actually attacked. Oh, a little birdie told yeah. me you did leave early and miss the equaliser. <laughs> I did. Tony, <laughs> what about you? I stayed to the end, unlike some people. <laughs> yeah. well, I was proper really, fan. Yeah, proper yeah, yeah. fan. Yeah, it's, it's interesting times as a hammer. I think um, those of us that are old enough or with a longer memory will realise that it's not always been this good for West Ham. And I think sometimes you should take a deep breath and just enjoy the ride, you know, because West Ham historically have been a yo-yo club. You know, there have been lots of bad times, not so many good times. So the last three or four seasons under David Moyes, in my opinion, it's been great to be a West Ham fan. And you can give stick to the other London clubs, etc., because we've been doing really well. And it's important to remember that. Right, gents, we always kick off the show properly with what's the score. We talk about a couple of topical issues that football fans up and down the land will be talking about, not just Hammers fans this week. And we've, there's only one place to start, basically. The title race, Liverpool and Man City played out that one-all draw at Anfield on the weekend. Arsenal were left beaming from ear to ear because it left them top. One point separates all three of the clubs. And there's a, there's a nice little story around all of them, isn't there? City chasing... A Record fourth consecutive Premier League title. Jurgen Klopp is leaving Liverpool at the end of the campaign to Liverpool. Want to bid a fairy tale farewell to him. And of course, you've got Arsenal, who haven't won a title. It would be 20 years since that famous Invincibles season. It is actually a genuine title race for a change, and not just one Sky and TNT Sports tried to big up <laughs> to make us watch the TV and pay the subscriptions. I mean, just first of all, Tony, we'll start with you. Mm. What are you making of it? Well, I think it's very exciting, Will. That's the first thing. Um, you know, I mean, as you quite rightly said there, we've had plenty of times where it's just been a one-horse race or a two-horse race. But to genuinely have three clubs in the title hunt, um, it's difficult for me because, like, I, you know, as a neutral fan, uh, I'm talking about West Ham, obviously, because we nev we're never involved. It, we? we're never involved in, in the title race. So I'm a neutral in all this. <laughs> and, I, you know, I, I think Man City would be a wonderful achievement for them to win four on the, on the spin, but I don't think that's good for football. I think you want to see someone fresh win it, you know. Having played for Everton, I don't particularly want to see Liverpool win it, obviously. And then as a West Ham fan, you don't really want to see Arsenal win it. So <laughs> it's very difficult for me to comment on it. But um, I think Arsenal would have learnt from their experiences last year. You know, they perhaps should have done a little bit better last year, but a very young squad. And I think they're going to go a lot closer this year. But you can see all you've got to do is look at the Arsenal one there, look at their next game, next league game. That's going to be a key game. There's no City doubt about decided. that. Man City away. Is I don't know about you. I always think when it comes to stuff like that, I just think which team do I want to win? Okay, which teams fans will be the most, the most in insufferable? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's well, the well, answer? Arsenal. Oh, it's Arsenal. 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 Exactly. Day of the week. Yeah, yeah. That's what I always think. Oh, it doesn't matter if City win it because I don't know too many City fans, and it just seems <laughs> they're a bit quiet nicer. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but you, you mentioned those fixtures. Um, I think it is all three of them have six games left against top half teams. You looked at, look at that Man City game on March 31st for Arsenal. Um, but how sort of crucial, crucial is that kind of run of fixtures in you deciding well, it? Not being funny, but Arsenal have got five of them are away against yeah. the top half teams, whereas I think City and Liverpool, Liverpool's of their games against the top half teams have only got three away. Man yeah. City have got two. And you feel like that's where it's going to come down what, what, to? You could possibly argue Arsenal have got the toughest running. You know, Man City, wonderful achievement, won the Champions League last year. Liverpool have won it before. I know Arsenal haven't won the Champions League and they will want to do well in the competition, but they'll have their eyes on that. You know, 20 years for Arsenal not to win the league. It's probably one of the longest times in their history that they haven't won the league. So they're under a bit of pressure. Yeah, it'd be a real shame, wouldn't it, if that home defeat to West Ham at the Emirates was what helped them. <laughs> oh, it'd be terrible time. for them. Oh, it'd be brilliant so far. Every time we talk about something, it comes from the West Ham. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm here for, I must admit, I find it much easier to do with you two on the sofa than so when we have a Fulham guest or whatever. And they're like, Fulham shut up, mate, we don't care. Well. <laughs> Right, it's my favourite part of the show. Once again, Isabel, you know why that is? Because I get to point at guests and go, ooh, are you? Even though I know, <laughs> even though I know exactly who you two are. I do feel a little bit ruder than I usually do doing it this week. But quite simple. Uh, you're going to get this three rounds. You'll get a blurry picture of a former Premier League player up on the screen. Former. Former, former Premier former, League right. player. Yeah, you get 40 seconds on the clock. And as the time goes down, the picture gets clearer and you get four clues. The first one is the first club they ever played for. The second clue is the last club they ever played for. The third one is the team for whom they played the most Premier League games. And the last one is their nationality. The picture gets clearer. Quicker you get it, 
the more points you get. You get right. the amount of points as seconds that are left on the clock. As you can see, we've had one outstanding performer and two <laughs> questionable. <laughs> <laughs> Slight <laughs> difference. <isn't> it? <laughs> I feel like it reflects their teams. Johnny's from City, then Craig was Bournemouth, and then D just lost the plot with Crystal Palace. He did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, may or may, yeah. <laughs> we may or may not have made the game slightly easier since yeah. the first two rounds. Yeah. <laughs> First club, Brickfield Rangers. Brickfield? Yeah. What are Rangers? <laughs> the well-known Brickfield Rangers. <laughs> yeah. Never heard of them, mate. The, Is that a football team? The, the infamous yeah. Brickfield Rangers. Have a look at the badge. So Last team moves. was Stockport Town. <laughs> so, top level, player. <laughs> Pit, pitch again, <laughs> clear sure as well. Premier League. Most Prem Jamie games, Hardy. Leicester. Incorrect. Keep going, keep guessing. Um, Non-league player. Yeah, wow. this, might, this might give it away. Uh, Nationality Welsh. Welsh. You Look at that may picture. Or may, or may, Welsh. Not, may or may not have played with him. I feel like it's... Robbie Savage? Yeah, yeah it's Robbie Savage. Yeah. 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 Two seconds to go. Tony, I believe you shared a training ground and a pitch with him for three seasons at Leicester City. <laughs> yeah. I, I knew he played for Crew. I didn't know he played for... I've never heard of the other two teams. Brickfield Rangers? <laughs> never heard of them. I think they're in the... What did Welsh... he play for them after he retired? No, that was the first team. They're in the Welsh third division. He played for them as a youth career. They That's not have... saying I'll play for Rom for Rolls. No one would ever <laughs> guess that, would they? Well, I must admit, one of the clues last week... That's ridiculous. One of the clues last week is Senrad, to be fair. But you got two points, so you're, not, you're already second. <laughs> you're already second on the lead. Good luck, Dave. Um, right, Dave, you ready for player two? <laughs> First club, West Ham. Uh, Grady D and Ghana. Incorrect. No. Um, uh, let's think. Yellow so kid. it's a Premier League player. Um, Last club, Millwall. Oh Ooh, God. God. Who started oh, is off Is it David West Martin Ham. by any chance? Ooh. No. Oh, good no. guess. Incorrect. Yeah, Great so. guess, though. Um, played for... Most oh, playing for... games for Leicester. Oh. Tony Cotty. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Even I didn't get that. <laughs> For Millwall. <laughs> I had two games right at the he end. He played of for Millwall. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God! I'm trying to forget that, and they keep bringing it up. <laughs> Even Tony Cotty. I didn't, didn't get that. Tony I had no <laughs> idea that was me. Seriously. He's going. What's the yellow, yellow kit? Those oh, two scheming that. away. Like, That's awful. Look at that, that, it's a goalkeeper. Look how big the shorts were. I had to fold them over. Look. First club Sporting Lisbon. Uh, Portuguese club. Ronaldo. Incorrect. Keep guessing. Oh, yes. That is very blurry, um, to be fair, isn't it? Last, last club, Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Sporting is better Chesterfield. <laughs> <laughs> um, that well-trodden uh, path. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, what colour's uh, the shirt? <laughs> most, most Prem games Fulham. for Fulham. Legends. <laughs> Fulham. Portug Portugal started off in Portugal. Nation. Portuguese. I know, oh, that's still as an L. Might have played for West Ham afterwards or before. Three, two, one. Maybe still at. Oh, we've got zero points. Oh, I know. No is. idea. Go, Go on, on, Dave. Bow and Morte. Yes. Bow and Morte. Yeah, West Ham icon. Gentlemen, a very respectable score from Who Are You? Well played. Yay. <laughs> Right, Dave, this is on or off target. You've got 60 seconds to tell us about the thing you hate most about football and why Izzy and I should feel exactly the same way as you. Then afterwards, we'll tell you whether it's on or off target. My pet hate is supporters from other teams and actually West Ham as well saying that the Europa Conference League was a Mickey Mouse trophy. How dare they say it was a Mickey Mouse trophy? West Ham are European champions, unlike Arsenal, unlike Tottenham and unlike a lot of the other club supporters who have been attacking me. As the great Noel Gallagher said to the simpleton Trent Alexander-Arnold, that every team's supporters, apart from West Ham apparently, support their ch club when they win things. It means as much to any supporter of West Ham as it does to Liverpool, as it does to Manchester City. We have got European pedigree as well. Let's look at the evidence. We went 17 games unbeaten in Europe. That record has only just been surpassed by the all-conquering Man City team. 
who just got up to 80. But we're better than Tottenham. We're better than Leeds record. We're better than Liverpool. We're better than Man United. 17 games in Europe unbeaten. And if you're saying that we beat some Mickey Mouse teams en route... <laughs> is that it? Yeah. I mean, so I'd only just started. <laughs> Definitely on target because as a Fulham fan, I remember well when we won the Intertoto Cup in 2002 and we booked a spot in the UEFA Cup the season after. So many happy, glittering memories as a Fulham fan. So definitely on target for me. Oh! Of course it's on target. Champions of Europe, we know what we are. Right, gentlemen, this is the top or terrible take section, but rather than rest on our laurels and just call it that, we have to flex our headline writing muscles. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, what we do, we take the name of the manager of the team you support and crassly twist it into a couple of puns that loosely resemble the words good or bad. Uh, so, buckle up, and I present to you... Muy bien, or oh my daves. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> Someone will laugh at one of those one day. Um... Yeah, it, it's quite simple. Basically, we give you a take about your club and you decide whether it is Moy Bien or Oh My Daves. And um, for Moy our... Bien's good, is it? Moy Bien, Bien is good. Yeah, yeah, so it's obvious. I thought I confirmed so, that. It's Muy Bien in Espanol, so, yeah. <laughs> So, West Ham fans have been doing the David Moyes karaoke, the Moyes E in. They want Moyes E out for what's. You are an idiot! <laughs> Seems like months now, but West Ham's seventh in the Premier League, still in the Europa League, just about at time of recording. Three seasons in Europe for the first time in their history consecutively. Uh, before we get your thoughts, here's what Talk Sports Jeff Stelling had to say about the issue. Is this the same David Moyes that won a European trophy for West Ham and has got them in the top ten of the Premier League? <laughs> Russell, Russell, you're losing your grip on reality, for goodness sake. You're doing brilliantly. OK, not at the weekend, but by and large, you're yes. doing brilliantly. Get a grip, son. Jeff got a lot of grief on Twitter from a few Hammers fans for that the other day, but Dave will come to you first. The take is, David Moyes is the greatest manager West Ham have had in the modern era. Their fans are treating him terribly and do not deserve him. Moy bien or an old my Dave's take? Moy bien. I totally agree. We've qualified for Europe, what is it, four seasons now? We went Three, seven. hopefully four, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> see, it will be. It will be four. <laughs> Don't worry about that. And 17 games unbeaten in Europe. We, I have seen some of the uh, best wins, like the 3-0 win in Lyon, like beating Seville at home. Uh, it's given me so much pleasure the last few seasons to watch West Ham. OK, I understand the style of football at times isn't what the purists want to see. But what's more important, winning the trophy or playing idyllically attractive football? Tony? More be in. For me as well, yeah. I'm, I'm a Moisey fan, I always have been. And, um, I mean, you look at West Ham managers that have won things, talking about the great John Lyle, the great Ron Greenwood, and, and David Moyes, he's on that list. You know, he's, he's probably our, in my opinion, our, our third best manager uh, in our history. You know, he's been about 20 West Ham managers, I think, something like that now. So, um, yeah, I, I sort of echo what Dave said, really. You know, I just think that you've got to be careful what you wish for, you know? It's all right saying... I always say to people, I, I get it. I understand the conversation, Moyes in, Moyes out and all that. And when people say, I want Moyes out, well, who, who do you want? And no-one's ever got an answer. <laughs> No-one can ever produce anyone who's better. You know, let's put it another way. Moyes' first spell, we got rid of David Moyes, we're getting Pellegrini. Useless, absolutely useless. But apparently, he was a world-class manager. And then we spent a load of money, end up in trouble. What do you do? Oh, let's get David Moyes back. And so you've got done. to be very, very careful. Yeah, you know, at the end of the season, if David makes his mind up to leave, thanks very much, Dave. You've done a great job and we'll all be pleased with what he's done and that. Who do you replace him with? And that's always the argument. What actually is the West Ham way? <laughs> I, I can tell you that, Is he? Do you want me to answer that? Yeah. In the words of my dad, we play good football, we win the occasional cup and depending on what division you're in, you beat Tottenham or Millwall. <laughs> <laughs> That is the West Ham way. Well, we've beaten Tottenham and we won a trophy. It's just the football, which is the point Dave made, which is a good point. 
And we all want to see good football. Look at Tottenham. They're, they're all moaning. Mourinho's rubbish. Conti's rubbish. Let's get Angie in. He's, yeah, they're playing great football. Are they going to win anything? Fifth. No. Fifth. Are they going to win anything? We don't know the answer to that. You know, so you just with football, everything's very opinionated and instant nowadays, and, that, and every fan's entitled to their opinion. I just think, as a West Ham fan, I'll be very, very reluctant to move David Moyes on. Right, second <laughs> one that might ruffle a few feathers. The London Stadium. Obviously, you guys were stripped of your spiritual home, Upton Park, in 2016. Sent kicking and screaming to the London Stadium. Obviously, it was a, a stadium designed for, not for football, for athletics. Um, it makes that, the sort of temporary feel of the stadium means that there's this huge gap between the seats and, and the ground. It seems like some fans can't actually watch the football on the pitch. Um, and every week, away fans are heard singing this. Obviously, you, you, on the flip side, you look at attendances and they've actually doubled. I think it's, what is it, 34,000 to 60,000. Um, and obviously, you know, you would say that the fortunes of your club have improved during this time at this new stadium. So the take is West Ham are far better off at the London Stadium than at Upton Park. And it's nowhere near as bad as fans make out. Muy bien or oh my Daves. <laughs> well, I'll go more BM because I, I actually love the stadium. I think the stadium's fantastic. It's a wonderful, wonderful stadium. Is it a football stadium? No, you've already made the point. It was built for athletics. West Ham have picked up the pieces and they've done their best. You know, they've squared it off behind the goals. They've increased the attendance. It's, it's going up to 66,000 as well because there's still a waiting list for West Ham fans. Would they have won the Conference League if they'd have stayed at Upton Park? I don't think we'll ever know the answer to that. The only thing I would say is that Upton Park was probably worth 10 points before you'd even started the season because it was so intimidating. It was hostile. Other players didn't want to play there and we got lots of points off the back of that. You know, when you come to the London Stadium, it's like, oh, what a lovely stadium. Very and let's have a nice, very pleasant. Let's have a nice time. Right, number three. David Gold and David Sullivan bought West Ham in 2010 when Egert Magnussen and his Icelandic cohort nearly dragged the club to the brink of liquidation. The first decade under GSB, as they were called, saw some pretty rank years under Avram Grant. Sam Allardyce, that included a relegation of course and also the widely unpopular move away from a spiritual home, really, of, of Upton Park. And after a flash in the Pan success season under Slaven Bilic in that last year. It didn't get any better once the move to the London Stadium had, had been made and that culminated, of course, in mass protests and the pitch invasion we all remember against Burnley. Fans planting corner flags. Mark Noble being forced to wrestle fans off of the pitch. But having fired and then rehired David Moyes in between that spell with Manuel Pellegrini, the glory days have finally returned to East London. So the take is, Tony will come to you first, David Sullivan is actually the best thing to have happened to West Ham and the club would not have achieved what they have without him. Oh, my Daves. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they've done some decent things, some decent things, but I don't know, I just, I, I personally think it's time for change, I, uh, but come back to what I said about the manager, it's all right changing the manager, but you've got to be careful who you're getting. I think the same applies to the current owners, you know. I think they've done their 14 years now. Um, they have done some good things. There's also been a lot of things that have been very unpopular with the fans. And I think in general, if you spoke to the fans, in general, most of them would want to change at board level now in terms of new ownership. But you've got to be careful. There's some really, really good owners out there and there's some really, really bad owners. And for West Ham to change, don't forget it's under British ownership as well at the moment. Do you want it to go under foreign ownership? We had the Icelandics before, as you mentioned, so just got to be a little bit careful with that. But I, I think we're getting to the stage now, particularly now that David Gold's gone. David Gold was a very, very nice man, and you know, someone I got on very well with, and uh, genuinely cared about the club. And you know, David's not part; he's not around anymore now. So I think we will see some changes over the next 
probably a year or so. Dave, Tony's obviously mentioned their potential foreign ownership. Czech billionaire Daniel Kratinsky is now a shareholder. Rumours about whether he might take away. Tony was involved with an attempted to takeover by Pi Capital not too long ago as well. What are your thoughts? I'd have to say on oh, my Daves as well because GSB was so unpopular and that game that you're talking about, there was like a mutinous atmosphere in the ground. And to be honest, I think they should have gone then. But they just got lucky, rehired Moyes, and he's done it single-handedly, despite the board. Yeah. I mean, OK, they've brought in Tim Steiden now, who has helped uh, bring in Alvarez and uh, the other signings that we made as well. But I think I think there's I, so one... There's only one person gives permission for those transfers, Dave. Who's that? That's David Moyes. Oh, there you go. So let's give Moyes all the credit then. So <laughs> I do think because they've rehired Moyes, they've fluked... Uh, the the fans getting on side, but you know they really should have gone when we were all demonstrating during the Burnley game. In it, in David uh, Sullivan's defence, I suppose it isn't David Moyes coughing up the cash, is it? <laughs> no, but you know if you're going to take on a Premier League club, you've got to have some money. You've got to pay for it. Also, you've got to have people skills as well. I, I know I talk about Fulham, but Marco Silva does all the groundwork for good signings. It's completely transformed the club. All right, they have the money, but the manager can make a massive difference. In general, West Ham are in a good place at the moment, but I do think that we might see some changes. It could be at managerial level, it could be at ball level, it could be both at the end of the season. I think we've all got to watch this space. But as I keep saying, just everyone be careful what you wish for because it's a dangerous route to go down. If you get the wrong manager and the wrong board, you know where you can end up. Absolutely. I suppose, you know, from the club's point of view, David Sullivan's point of view, he would argue that for as much of the grief that he and the flack that he took for some objectively bad decisions, that perhaps he's due a bit of credit for the success they've seen on the pitch as well. But that is an argument that not many fans are putting forward, I don't think. Right, so I think that was 2-1 to Moy Bien, even though I loved you saying, oh, my mm -hmm. babes, I've got to say. Um, and before we go, we've designed a sick little challenge to establish exactly which team's fans are the best in the land. So, Tony, Dave, are you ready for the pressure test? Yes. <laughs> you cannot put pressure on me, no chance. Right, gentlemen, it's the pressure test. It's quite simple. In front of you is a bag of deflated size three footballs. West Ham get... balls as well, right? Oh, West Ham <laughs> balls, yeah. You get 45 seconds on the clock. Tony, five points for every ball that you pump up. Izzy will also ask you a question as the time starts. You get one point for every correct answer you give to that question. Right. One question, loads of five points. Right, Tony, are you ready? <laughs> yes. Izzy, are you ready? Yeah. Ball boy Dave, are you ready? I'm ready, mate. Okay. <laughs> Right, name as many players for Tony Anthony or Antonio who have ever played in the Premier League. <sighs> Tony Cotty, Michael yeah. Cowan, Tony Oak, Ball's done. Next done it. Oh, I'm not even looking. Uh, Tony Yaboa. Correct. Um, 15 seconds gone. <laughs> 20 seconds gone. That's not going up, is it? That's a, that's no, a move. It's not no, a good problem. Stop the clock, maybe. Yeah. Is it? All right. Don't worry. We... Ready? Go, go. Very high seconds. I don't know. Tony, I can't think of any tightness. Thirty Tony seconds gone. Boy. Yeah, go on that, dude. <laughs> well, we're counting that. Thirty-five seconds gone. Any more answers? Antonio. Antonio. Said Antonio. Didn't I? Yeah. Look, there's some dodgy pump. <laughs> Can't Excellent even get a puzzle. <laughs> you novelty. <laughs> Can't even get a pump at work. I'm he not deserves coming on that. No more. He deserves that. Forty-five <laughs> seconds. God, I've been. I, I don't. We have had some pump issues in the past. To be fair, but I think pump I think, issues, ball issues, and everything. I think yeah. we're giving. Look, there's there's two halves there. Pump, dodgy pump. I think yeah. two. Dodgy needle one. Right. That's two balls pumped up. Yeah, so don't well worry. Come up that is Tony's, didn't that it? is ten points and. I am told right. that you got three correct answers. There has been some dodgy counting in the past, so if the episode goes out and your score goes up, yep. then congratulations. Okay. Right. But no, thank you. good effort, Tony Cotty. 13 points on a pressure yeah. test. <laughs> Didn't even say Tony Adams, did I? Just quite, so now I've got time to think about it. No, you have, it is uh, the pressure uh, test, uh, I grew up. Like people and your crack. old mate, Tony Gale. Tony Gale. Of course, yeah. Tony no, Grant, Tony it? Hibbert, uh, Tony oh. Springit, uh, Anthony at Man United yeah. at the moment, Tony, Tony Cascarino. Yeah, Quite no, a few answers no, you missed no, yeah. on there. 
You cannot put pressure on me. No chance. That's great, but I think we are, that is it for this episode, isn't it? So thank you so much to well, the well, amazing right. Tony Cooksey and well. David Charles. Hey! 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 And thank you to you guys for tuning in. Don't forget you can listen to this week's episode as a podcast. So make sure to follow the tapping on all your major platforms. Subscribe to Sunsport's YouTube channel. Get stuck in in the comments. Check out the previous eight episodes. And we'll see you next time. See ya. Woohoo! Got it, Tappy!